On February 27, 2010, a magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake occurred off the coast of central Chile. The earthquake struck at 3.34 a.m. local time and was felt along 600 kilometers of the coast. Numerous strong aftershocks continued for weeks after the main shock. Over 500 people were killed by this earthquake, 12,000 were injured, and some 800,000 were displaced. The total economic loss was estimated to be 30 billion U.S. dollars. This was truly a mega quake, and it was the fifth largest earthquake in the past 100 years. The earthquake lasted for about a minute, during which time great damage was caused to surrounding cities. Adobe and unreinforced masonry buildings suffered the most damage. Most of the newer buildings, which followed Chile's modern earthquake-resistant building code, were undamaged. Older buildings that were strengthened by retrofitting sustained minor damage, as did wooden structures. I'm in Calquinas in central Chile looking at some of the earthquake damage. In this case, it's an adobe structure. Now these kind of buildings would only be allowed pre-1960. The uh, walls have, uh, have tilted off to the side and the central doorway where the uh, weakest point was has completely collapsed, taking down with it much of the roof. In the cities of Talca and Calquinas, buildings that had survived several previous earthquakes did not hold up against the strong ground shaking caused by this earthquake. Suddenly the car started moving. And I thought, wow, what's going on here? And then I suddenly realized that it was an earthquake because the car was pitching, started to pitch violently. Uh, it was pitching sideways and front and back and bouncing up and down and looking out the car because I started to think, well, wh what's happening to the ground around us? Is it going to open up? Do we need to jump out of the car and run? And you could actually see the ground moving up and down and the lampposts moving. En un sentido en otro, no, no tenía un sentido parejo. The movement was harsh and then decreased. The following aftershocks were the same. To put it in better words, it never ended. It was long. You would try to calm the kids by telling them it was going to be over, but it never ended. If you look at the city, it's in chaos. We had no water and electricity for many days. Slowly, the basic services began to work. No phones, no signal. About three days later, on Monday, the phones began to work. We had to go to an office to work and provide emergency care. Aside from the shaking, the earthquake also caused a tsunami. The first of several tsunami inundations arrived at the coast approximately 20 minutes after the main shock. This tsunami devastated much of the coast and was responsible for more than half the deaths. The uh, height of the uh, watermark in that tree is at least 20 feet or seven meters. This places the water level above the second story of the local houses that were occupied this land. This means that the people never had a chance. The tsunami inundation was as high as their entire house. The result is that what you can see is that houses were simply swept away. The tsunami affected nearly all coastal communities and essentially washed away some entire villages. Reports indicate that the second and third wave were the strongest. We just went to a secure place in the corner of the garden and looked at the house and, and watched as bits of concrete fell off the outside. But but maybe, maybe it lasted for between one and two minutes. It felt around you know, one and a half minutes, the really strong shaking, and then a few minutes of, of, of very gentle kind of ground roll type shaking after that. Seven years ago, we were warned about a possible tsunami, so people were prepared. Most of the people that died were actually tourists because they were not prepared. The basic things you can do is to have water, a flashlight, and some non-perishable food. One factor that caused this earthquake to be so deadly was that it struck early Saturday morning. Since it occurred on a weekend, many tourists were visiting the coast. Chilean tourists visiting the coast did not receive a warning of the tsunami 
and more than 200 lost their lives. Fortunately, local coastal residents self-evacuated to higher grounds immediately after feeling the earthquake, thereby saving their lives. In addition to the tsunami, the main causes of damage included severe ground shaking, local site amplification of ground motion, soil liquefaction leading to ground failure, lateral spreading of the soil, and landsliding. Strong ground shaking from the February 2010 earthquake caused severe damage to many cities in Chile. In addition, the long coastline of this country makes it highly susceptible to tsunamis. However, the existence of modern building codes in Chile limited the loss of lives and property. Tsunami preparedness caused local residents to self-evacuate. Other countries in earthquake-prone regions can learn a lot from the recent experience in Chile.